So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio Reading and for my YouTube channel. And I'm super excited to be joined by the very talented Erin uh, Shaniger. How are you? How, how are things? I'm good. It's, it's Shana Her. It's a silent <gasps> chin. Ah, oh, I do apologise. Sh- Shana Her. There we go. It's funny because my granddad took the G out when they came over to the UK and then it got snuck in at some point got put back in don't apologize it's the sort of Gallagher Gallagher thing so sometimes the G is silent sometimes it isn't but it's yeah there was variations growing up at school let me tell you where the G is <laughs> yeah yeah it but must have been happened. it must have been fun when they were doing the register and it'd be what 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 teacher will do what pronunciation this time well it just I mean some of the variations I, I shouldn't probably say on there but yeah, it was all, as you can imagine, there's letters in there that can form words that aren't a surname. Um, yeah, so yeah, I've got Shanaga, Shanagaha, Shanagaha, uh, but it's fine. It's, thank you for trying. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, yeah, let's start off. How, how has the last couple of years been for you? How have you coped with the kind of the new world we live in? <clears throat> um, so it's really interesting. I locked down quite early in that it, it, there was sort of a, a sense of there's a lockdown coming, this is going to happen. And so me and my friends had already started sort of doing Zooms and my friend ran an online quiz anyway. So we all had sort of Zoom access, which was incredible. I don't work for Zoom. This is not me <laughs> like selling them. And the day the announcement was made, we all watched it live while we were on the Zoom. And they said, you know, there'll be, it will be three weeks. I remember then going, oh, three weeks, <laughs> three weeks. How will I do three weeks? But also knowing, ain't no way this is going to be three weeks. We've all seen the movies. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I remember at the time going, oh, God, oh, three weeks. Oh, okay. Um, and isn't it funny? Because it was incredibly traumatic at times. But... I haven't got that much to complain about, Matthew, if I'm honest. I managed to work, had a roof over my head, you know, I had food in, I had a computer to connect with people on. Uh, So, of course, I moaned about things and I found things really difficult because I was living on my own at the time. And that was really tough, being on my own in an apartment, didn't have a garden. So I registered to do food deliveries and tried to sort of get out. You know, it wasn't entirely altruistic. I wanted to, I wanted to get out of my flat. But I was also very lucky and had brilliant people in my life and had connections and online. And yeah, I've come out the other side. I'm sure there was times where I was rocking back and forth, crying my eyes out, thinking, when will it end? But compared to some, I think I got off lightly, if I'm honest. I mean, did you find yourself during the height of the lockdown learning any new skills? I mean, Sorry. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> um, learning new skills. What did I do? Sorry, it was a really bad joke. I did drink a lot. I can't lie. I just thought, right, if the world's ending, I'm going to have a drink in my hand. Le- new skills. Do you know what? Resilience. If if I'm totally, totally honest with you, I didn't have the space to be breaking uh, baking bread. I was, I I struggled being on my own and it was like, okay, I really need to get myself together here because I don't know how long this, yes, I think resilience, so lots of podcasts and reading and I guess, uh, you know, going inwards a little bit and it was a time of pause, wasn't it? And what's it all about and what matters and what do I want and so on and so forth. And yeah, so maybe I think, yeah, a bit of work on me. That sounds really active. Doesn't it? <laughs> Bread. <laughs> and I mean, the other thing as well is that obviously, you know, for a lot of people who maybe weren't used to kind of the online world, they've had to introduce themselves. Is it something that you were already okay with? You know, have you had have have you had to learn sort of the kind of techn- technology side of things, or is that quite, you know in your sort of remit? Yeah, I think because I, I taught for a long time, and during lockdown, I was actually lecturing full time. So I was sort of sat in my apartment from nine till gone five o'clock because we were trying to reinvent the wheel every single day. So I was quite good with technology anyway. Um, And uh, so that wasn't too bad. I'd already, I think I felt I sort of, I had a head start on how to do things and um, yeah, it's quite good technically. Um, but, but that's massively affected the, the industry, certainly of Zoom auditions and self-tapes. And so I think where, 
I was used to sort of doing tapes, but I, um, I certainly know there was a lot of people who were always in the room or, you know, especially theatre. When that started to open back up again, but things were still online. Yeah, it's a very different medium to work with. I mean, obviously that, that I imagine must have affected, you know, uh, uh, you know, everyone around the world. But, for, but you know, when you're about to do projects or, or start yeah. working on a new show, you know, were you affected majorly? I know that I spoke to Daniel Ryan a, a little while back and he said that obviously the Bay had to be postponed um, for a while. So, I mean, you know, how, how, how did that work for you with, with kind of everything suddenly just changing? Yeah, so I was booked to do a series that started in the March and it shut down on the first day of production. And it was sort of, oh, okay, maybe in a month it'll pick back up. I think for me, when the soap stopped, I didn't think that's what the apocalypse would look like. <laughs> I mean, it was like, oh, the soaps have stopped. This is, this is real. You know, because dramas get moved and dates move, but I think when something that's going out, you know, as, as much as Coronation Street and Emmerdale and extend it it was just like oh wow something's we, you know we're really stopping now so it's so a lot of things stopped got postponed a lot of things just got cancelled because there was no room to put them elsewhere down the line I was really lucky I have a, a really wonderful voice agent and she called me and said look I because I, I do quite a bit of voiceover work and she said if you can get yourself some home recording equipment she said because that won't stop. If anything, the audio world is really going to open up because people are sort of going to be at home a lot more and, you know, TV isn't being made at the moment. <clears throat> so, sorry, I'm also post-COVID, so I'm still quite chesty. So I, I, I got all my uh, gear, my microphone interface, da -da 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 -da, and I, I got to work a lot from home doing voiceovers and, and teaching and so again, I, you know, I feel very lucky. I, I was still sort of in, as it were, and still working. And, but it was a very odd time when it all stopped. And we were very lucky that we could open up again and start doing, uh, you know, TV and we could wear masks. And, but for me, when, you know, the theatre shot, I mean, the theatre world. I th and again, this is going to sound probably quite dramatic, pardon the pun, but I think what theatre gives everyone and then what theatre didn't get back in the pandemic was just heartbreaking, just the job losses, the, you know, and then how certain things were opening back up. So you could go to a football match, but you couldn't go to the theatre. And it just seemed like there was this really weird, like it had been left behind. So it's, I'm trying to go and see as much as I can at the moment to just really enjoy being, and even if it's rubbish, I'm like, ha ha, well, it's a show, it doesn't matter, it's lovely to be honest. Because, I mean, as well, with the theatres, I mean, we saw, you know, some of the theatres have had to close permanently because of this, this whole, you know, uh, last couple of years. And, and it's, it's horrible to see that because, you know, for a lot of people going out to the theatre, you know, it's, it's a real event. You know, you can make a day of it, you know, and it, it, it just brings pure joy to, 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 to get out and see a great show. Absolutely. It was... It was people's careers, but it was also, you know, there are certain people who would go to the theatre every other week and go and see every show that's on. And, you know, new writing, new directing, new actors, new producers, new venues. And, and I'm in Manchester and there's, there's an incredible theatre hub in Manchester where everyone goes to see each other. You know, whenever there's a show on, even if it's, you know, an evening of short plays or everyone goes out everyone goes everyone supports each other people make connections they then put on things together or they'll start writing or you know it's a brilliant network and for that to have stopped for quite a long period of time and some people not coming back from that is devastating yeah yeah it really is now for you, let's go back to where it all began. Do you remember kind of how you first became interested in, in acting? Do you remember where, where the kind of the, the bug bit you as it were? Yeah, so we, we, um, I'm one of four, me and this were four. And every Friday we were allowed a video in the video shop. And, you know, very working class family. We grew up, we only had terrestrial TV. This is pre-Channel 5, by the way. Um, so there wasn't always that much on. So the Friday video store treat was everything. And we would get films and then rewind and watch it again and then rewind and watch it again. And it was just, yeah, film, film before television, actually. 
that I would just get absolutely lost in. And as, a, as quite a hyperactive, loud child, I would sit in silence watching the films. And it was only when I was sort of 13, 14, I sort of realised, oh, people do that as a job. And it's not just in America and it's not just for other people. It can also sort of happen in England and people do jobs over here. Um, so, yeah, I think it was around 13, 14. I just thought, I'm going to be an actor. And as you do when you're that age and you have no idea how you will do something. <clears throat> because no one in my family was a performer. I didn't know any other actors in a profession. So it, it really was a completely unknown world that I knew I wanted to go into, but I had no idea how. So when I was 16 and it came to choosing options, I told you I could talk. You're literally getting my life. <laughs> um, I just thought I'm going to go to college. I'm going to do drama. And I didn't want to stay on at sixth form and do theatre studies. I wanted to do a lot more practical, uh, practically based stuff. And I did. So I was 16 and I left all my friends. I left everything I knew and I went to college. It's sad. I have to look back. I can't believe I did. I was 16. I didn't know anyone, but I knew I wanted to act. And the people I met on my first day of college are still some of my best friends now. It was a very magical time. And then I took a year out and then it was sort of the next step, right? Now what I do, like, what do I do? And I remember uh, my TV teacher at Blackburn Valley College saying, oh, go to Salford University. Uh, Maxine Peake went there. And so I just went, okay. She goes, okay, and I did. So I just went, yeah, I'll go there then. Because I was so, I'm such a warrior, the older I am, I go, oh, well, well, maybe I'll look into it and I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll, you know, problem solve. And, but then it was like, okay, great, I'll just do that. And then I did and, yeah, put shows on and work with people and got an agent and it sort of all went from there. I mean, I say, fun, funnily you should mention Maxine Peak. I mean, she appeared on this show a few weeks back, or it, actually no, it was just I before Christmas. It. She's an absolute legend, and I absolutely loved uh, talking to her. But obviously she talked about how, for her, it kind of, it felt weird kind of obviously going into a show and people sort of felt a bit like she'd just been plucked off the street um, for, for a TV role. I mean, for you, obviously you've had, you know, an amazing career doing so many different roles. For you, has there been like roles that you've enjoyed more is there sort of like a favorite that you've done um it, it, so far i mean what 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 has been your kind of favorite role well i think a lot of actors i certainly have imposter syndrome on every single job of course it's funny you know because there's an actor i think well i could do that and why aren't i being seen for that and <laughs> when you get it you go oh god why have they given it me so it's sort of for me it flips and then you get the imposter syndrome and you have to get past it um, and then you realise everyone else has it also. For me, The Bay has been incredible. Doing three series has allowed me to feel more confident and take more risks. So there's been a real enjoyment in that. I love this bunch of people and it doesn't feel like my first day at school anymore because there's a familiarity with us all. So that's really allowed me to, oh, if I mess up, I mess up, it's fine. It doesn't matter. We all know each other. Whereas when, because a lot of my career has been <clears throat> a few days on this, a few days on that. So it's always your first day at school where you don't want to be too silly. You don't want to be too risky. You don't want to show up trying to make everyone laugh because in the scheme of things, you're just a tiny little cog, an important cog, but tiny. And there's a time and a place to sort of, you know, really stretch your legs. And it, and it isn't sometimes in those roles. So yeah, so the Bay has been, <clears throat> excuse me, an incredible role for, for me to try and grow as an actor and trust myself. And, uh, and then there's been dream jobs, uh, but Peaky Blinders was just a dream because it's a show I watched, a show I loved with actors I just really look up to. And then when you find yourself on set in the costume, you just think, wow, this is you know, little Blackpool Erin with, you know, an unpronounceable surname is punching us up. Yeah, it's lovely. And I, I never take it for granted, ever. I mean, obviously, one of the other pro uh, shows that you had the pleasure of working on was, of course, Holby City. And we know that, obviously, the show uh, is being axed. I, I sort of think, still find that strange to say. I mean, what are your memories of working on that show? And are you disappointed to see it going? 
I'm so disappointed because I tell you what shows like Casualty and Holby do. And but, but yeah, talk about Holby because because of the decision that's been made. Every week, actors, you know, new writers, directors get a chance to get their foot on the ladder, to get in the industry, you know. So Casualty, for example, when I did Casualty, it's the first main part I ever played. And so every week, someone gets to play a main part who's maybe never done that before. And where do, else do you find that? You know, the, the story sort of focuses around, you know, these different characters, these different guest leads. And it's some of the best memories. I'm still really close with people I, I did Casualty uh, with, and even people I did Holby with. It's just a brilliant, brilliant format whereby it gives so many people opportunities and jobs. And yeah, you get to play these huge roles that you maybe wouldn't get in a drama. You know, it's, it's such a shame. And I feel really privileged to have, to have worked on it and, and every, with everyone there, yeah. Now, obviously, you know, fast forward to The Bay. The Bay is fantastic. And I mean, I'm loving Series 3 so far. Obviously, at the point of recording this, we've seen the first three episodes. There's another three to go. I'm not, I'm not one of these people that, well, normally I would, but I'm trying not to binge it. I want to watch it week after week. But I mean, for you to get to work on an amazing show, and like you say, it's in Series 3, it's doing hugely, pop, hugely well. It's been hugely popular. For you, what is it like to... to to a be a part of of a show like that, but also to to kind of get the audience reaction and to to have people always wanting to talk to you about it. That must be amazing. It's so lovely. And <clears throat> so when I started in season one, the role of Karen was a very small role. So much so that when I auditioned for the part, there wasn't enough scenes of dialogue for me to audition as Karen. So I auditioned as Lisa. Knowing full well Lisa had already been uh, given uh, to wonderful Morgan, but I, so I, even though it had been cast, I was auditioning for that role, but keeping Karen in, but playing it as maybe Karen would play it. And so that was very strange. And I was thrilled just to have this custody sergeant role that turns up, you know, every now and then. And then to find out I got promoted. I've had more promotions in the Bay, I think, than I ever have in, in life. It's been incredible. To find out I had a promotion for season two, like had my agent not told me, I would have thought it was a wind up. Because that's something you do. You, as an actor, you go on, maybe this is just me, you go onto a job and you, and you always go, yeah, but maybe they could bring me back or maybe they could write back. And then when it happens, you go, oh. And then the imposter syndrome <laughs> comes <laughs> in. Um, so it was an absolute dream, Matthew, just to go, oh, wow, I'm going back. This is incredible. You must like what I did. Oh, don't, don't mess it up then. And then to go back in season three, and then she's a flow now. I just feel so privileged. And the audience are gorgeous. Gorgeous. And I'm stuck now in threads on Twitter because I've sort of interacted with people and then it's now it's, I've got like 300 notifications and it's because this conversation has gone on where I've been sort of tagged into it and, but it's lovely. And we're genuinely so grateful to everyone who watches it. It means the world. It really, really does. Yeah. And I mean, we must also mention the beautiful location of Morecambe, which I mean, I've never had the pleasure of going. I've been to Blackpool, but never been to Morecambe, uh, which is stupid, really, because they're so close to one another. But I mean, for you, what is it like to, to film there? Well, I, I'm born and bred in Blackpool, so I'm a sangrone and I, I know what it is to live in a town that is sometimes misrepresented, that is often underfunded that people maybe have perceptions of, but that also still has this, you know, feeling to it, that it, it was this glorious place where, you know, the stars of Vegas would come over and, you know, and what I absolutely love about the Bay and Morecambe and the way Dara writes is you see it all. So we get these incredible sunrises and then you'll see, you know, maybe slightly more run down area of the town, but then we're back into sort of just beautiful pockets and, and it shows all of it. It's not trying to be one thing. It's like 
Morecambe is the, char- the, the main character, essentially, and we all sort of like play within it. Um, so it's really lovely to, you know, when I'm filming on the beach, for example, I just think, gosh, I grew up just, I was born just there. And yeah, and I'm back. It's, there's something really lovely about it, yeah. And I'm used to the weather, so. <laughs> And also for season three, um, you had, you know, you had to learn British Sign Language. So what was that? Because I mean, I mean, I've, I've never done anything. I would love to be able to do it. But I mean, how long did it take you to learn? How, how did you get, you know, kind of get started? Well, it sort of had to become strategic. So I found out that I would be signing. Um, and then we had maybe eight weeks to learn it, which is it's a very short amount of time. Um, so I started getting lessons. I was researching it my, myself. So I was working with Aisha Gavin and then on set, I would work with Emma Potts Watson and Nadine Islam, who plays uh, Jamal. So we would all work together. Um, so I was learning the history of BSL, the importance of it. That was really important to Aisha who was teaching me. You know, she said, before you know anything, you need to know that we are proud. Um, and so that was the first sign I learned was, you know, I'm probably doing it wrong and she should kill me. Um, so she introduced me to, you know, you need to honour this and it's really important and, you know, this is a community. And so that was incredible and it changed a lot of my process, I think, because it wasn't just about learning a skill. It, it had such meaning behind it. And then what we did is I got, I sort of was able to see in advance some of the scenes we would be doing. So we would work on the scenes and then alongside that I would be continuing to learn and looking at all the different structure and yeah. But, and I'm still learning now. I'm still trying to top myself up and learn more words each week and yeah. I mean, they say the show, like you say, Morecambe is the main character, but has an amazing cast. And it must be great to work with such talented actors, um, you know, year after year. I mean, obviously, I, like I said earlier, I've spoken to Daniel Ryan, who is just a delight. Um, so, yeah, what is it like to work with all these amazing people? Well, again, I turn into 13-year-old Erin from Blackpool, who goes, wait a second, I wanted to do this and now I'm doing it. And it does feel surreal. It really, really does. And it's incredible. And I have to say, because I've been more involved in season three, I spent a lot more time with the guest cast. And they were the most incredible people. We're all still in touch. They brought so much to this show. It, 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 it's mind-bending just to watch them. Because, again, it's sort of like, you know, Morecambe's the main character, and then the, this family has suffered a loss, and then we go into that to sort of investigate it. And... It's so amazing to to see all these little different parts of the show sort of come alive and the guest cast are their own sort of little entity, you know, and uh, yeah, just thrilled. And I met um, Gary Lewis and I'm a big fan of Gary Lewis. And as I'm getting older, I'm like, I don't want to have any regrets. So I'm just, I'm just going to tell Gary Lewis that I'm a fan of his work. I'm just going to tell him. And so I, I met him briefly. Uh, at base which is a so you know with all sorts of it looks like ice cream vans but we all sort of sit in them and we were filming one day and I was like I'm just gonna tell him I'm just gonna tell him I'm just gonna tell him and I was like um sorry Gary I just uh, I just need to I just need to tell you and I got really emotional <laughs> and then I just went I just need to tell you that I'm just not your fan of your work and and I lost it Matthew and he was being so lovely. He was going, oh, Erin, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I was going, no, because the thing is, like, when you did Billy Elliot, I was a mess. So I've decided I'm never going to tell anyone I'm a fan of theirs again, <laughs> just in case that happens again. But what was worse is we'd just finished for the day and we're all going home and someone went, Erin, you and Gary are in a car together. So I just cried in front of him and then we had to go in the car back to base together. Uh, but he was a dream and he was gorgeous and so, so lovely. Um, so yeah, like Gary Lewis, and I'm working with, with him. He's mental, Matthew. I feel really, really lucky. I really do. Now, obviously, we have fingers crossed that there will be more going forward. Would you, would you like there to be a fourth series? Do you think there will be? You would have to drag me away from that show. Wild horses, Matthew. I would love it. I would absolutely love it. And, you know, it all sort of depends on the, the, the ratings, the figures. You know, because shows have to be successful. 
to sort of go again. It doesn't matter how much certain people love them. It's got to be loved by the masses and, and it's looking good so far. You know, the response has been brilliant, but you never know until you get that green light. It's, you just never know. But, and I know everyone else has said it. We would all love to. There's, yeah. Well, we would love to. We would absolutely love to. And if we do, you'll have to come. Oh, definitely. I'd love to. Absolutely love to. Walk on part. I mean, oh, wow. There we go. That at all, but, <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, going forward, I mean, is there a dream job that you haven't had the chance to do yet or, or, or things that you're looking forward to in the future? What, 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 what can you tell us? Oh, that's a really good one because I've, I've surpassed so many dreams. Like being a custody sergeant in a drama, and it was brilliant. Like, oh, I mean, you know, and then to be a detective, like, it's like, what? And then to get promoted. It, so, do you know what? And this is the truth. I would just like to carry on working. I feel really privileged working. It, it, I'm so lucky that I get to do it. And I would maybe, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I feel really lucky. You know, I've done some period drama, I've, you know love to write i do some writing i'd like to see what other people would do with my words that would be nice and then they'd probably get really jealous and be like no i'll do it i'll do it fine um yeah i don't know maybe get promoted again maybe be the head of the police <laughs> Who knows? uh yeah I, i'm just you know when i was younger younger of course it was hollywood it was always like i want to go to the oscars and, da, 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 da. and now it's like no I just want to work with really lovely people and tell good stories and that would be a dream yeah absolutely now I just have to say it's been a pleasure talking to you but before we go is there any messages you'd like to give to anyone who's listening in hospital at the moment who's obviously not having the best of times anything you'd like to say to them to anyone who is suffering and struggling I hope that you at least find moments of peace and you manage to smile and I send you strength and love. Yeah. Now, I just have to say thank you so much, Erin. It's been a pleasure. Of course, people need to continue to watch The Bay, which is on uh, every Wednesday night at nine o'clock on ITV. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for giving up your time. Of course, keep safe. And yeah, you're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>